Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur family. This is Shay Bynes, founder and chief fire igniter of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur and the host of the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur podcast. Today, I want to share with you a portion of a broadcast that took place in the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneurs Facebook group, and it was our Ask KDE feature. And what this does is it gives an opportunity for anyone in the community to submit a question that they have about doing business in partnership with God. Now, the question that was submitted is, I would like to understand what the kingdom is. I know Jesus talked about it a lot, but I don't really understand it. Can you help? And one of our newest members of Team KDE, uh, Phil Bynes, my husband, uh, tackled this question for the community. And so I pray that this is a blessing to you. Good afternoon, KDE. Um, this is Phil Bynes, one of the Igniter mentors um, in, King, uh, in um, Team KDE. This is probably my first time going live by myself, so uh, we'll see how it works out. Um, but I, I'm, I'm coming live today. I wanted to ta uh, ta tackle a question that we got in Ask KDE. And so let me read what the question is, and then we'll get into it, okay? So um, someone asked, I would like to understand what the kingdom is. I know Jesus talked about it a lot, but I don't really understand it. Can you help? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into that topic a little bit today. Um, let's see. Well, first, first, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into a definition. Then you know we'll we'll go from there. Okay. So I got my notes together. You know I'm trying to be um, a teacher today, and we'll see how this flows. Okay. So uh, the definition, according to Dictionary.com, kingdom equals a country, state, territory ruled by a king or a queen. And some synonyms for uh, kingdom is a realm, domain, dominion, uh, sovereign state, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna establish a working definition of uh, what we think of when we think of the kingdom of God. So the working definition is for the kingdom of God is the realm in which God, the realm in which God's governing authority reigns. So when we think about, you know, government, we, a lot of times we have a hard time with kingdom because we're thinking about, about the kingdom of God in the same way as we think about our democracy. You know, democracy has a bunch of rules and it's reigned and it is run by those rules that's established by, you know, men, right? So in democracy, it's, we're governed by the people. Well, in uh, God's kingdom, there's a king, the king does the governing, and uh, everything falls underneath that, right? So let's get a little bit further into this thing. The kingdom is God's sovereign state in which he makes the rules and calls the shots. It is the territory in which God exercises his governmental authority. So the key points that I wanna tackle are first, the kingdom has a spiritual citizenship. Um, number three is, um, under, number two is gonna be the kingdom has a culture and number three, the kingdom has a mission, okay? Uh, the, the key points about the kingdom, number one, it has a spiritual citizenship. So we're gonna turn to John three and three, and then we're gonna go um, to three, five through seven, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. So John three and three, Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Okay, and then after Nicodemus uh, replied, um, Jesus, um, Continued on in verse five, Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. You know, we see here that the kingdom of God flows in the spirit versus in the flesh. And that looks a lot different from the way our, our kingdoms of this world operate, right? So we're going to be flowing in the spirit. Okay, so the kingdom has a culture. The culture, the scriptures draw a very distinct line between the works of the flesh and the works of the spirit. Because of that, there is a noted difference in kingdom culture, and it's one that in which the spirit is alive versus in, in the flesh being dead. So if we think about 
the works of the flesh, you know, um, the scripture tells us the works of the flesh are envy, lust, you know, all those type of things, right? So you can't be in the flesh and operate in the kingdom at the same time. So there's going to be a very distinct culture, um, a cultural difference. It's going to be countercultural when you're operating in kingdom. It's not going to look a lot of the ways how regular government looks, you know. An example of the kingdom has a culture. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. Okay. I declare, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Let me read that again. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does perishable inherit imperishable. You know, people make excuses for things that they do um, when they're when they're doing things for God. Like, well, that's just how I am, and this, that, and the other. I mean, it, the the fact that someone would say that's how I am, you know, it it reveals that okay, right now we're talking about the flesh. That's how I am. No, the king has a very distinct culture. He has a way of doing things. It's going to be in alignment with his word, and it's going to flow in a way in which it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't disrupt what the king is trying to do in an individual, even if the individual is wrong. Um, if we're talking about a customer, for example, that we're dealing with that at our job. For example, um, let's say I'm a massage therapist and I have someone come in and, you know, they're being a little bit rude. You know, they, they're late to their um, appointment and, you know, they're a little bit mad because of, you know, I, I'm, I have other clients after them, and so I'm going to cut their time. And so if I'm operating in the spirit, when someone is rude to me, I'm not going to come out of my mouth something like, well, I mean, you were the one who was late, so um, you need to get over it, right? At that point, I've, I've stepped over into the flesh instead of operating in the spirit. So um, when we talk about kingdom culture, you know, you, you know, people used to say, you know, like a cliche, what would Jesus do? Well, you know, what would the king do? You know, it's the king's way of doing. It's, a, it's the king's way of being. When we're operating in the kingdom of God, we're going to display uh, characteristics of the king, you know? All right, let's see. Let's go. The kingdom has a mission. Okay, so the mission that the kingdom has is to regain lost territory. You know, when Adam had to fall, when Adam and Eve had to fall, um, we gave over the keys of the kingdom of this earth to Satan. And with that, you know, um, we also gave, gave away dominion and reign. And it was, it was really, I mean, it was ours to give away because God gave it to us in, in the Garden of Eden. He says, uh, go have dominion, subdue, and, you know, the rest of the stuff that it says in the scriptures. And that was our job. That was our job description. We were supposed to have dominion in the earth. We were supposed to subdue the earth. Everything was supposed to be under subjection to us. And what we did by uh, disobeying God is we gave over those keys to the kingdom um, of this earth to Satan. So we're going to go to Revelations eleven fifteen, and we're going to read a little bit more about that. Okay. So this in Revelations, this is where um, they're talking about the seventh, the seventh trumpet. Okay. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, which said, "The kingdom." of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. So when we lost control over the kingdoms of this world, you know, uh, God already had, his, had, had the plan in place. The plan was to bring this world back into subjection underneath the original king, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And so when we're operating in the kingdom, that's why everything has to be motivated by what will be pleasing unto the king. You know, the king has a certain, a set way of doing things. And so we should have, as citizens, we should have a set way of doing things. Um, I think I missed something. I don't recall talking about uh, citizenship. Oh, yes, I did. It has a spiritual citizenship. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, as citizens of the kingdom of heaven, we have a right and we have, we are ambassadors of that kingdom and we're supposed to be bringing the kingdoms of, the, of this world back under the subjection of the King of Kings. And so when we think about the kingdom of God, we're thinking about his governmental authority, his rule, his reign, his way of doing, his way of being. 
we're going to flow in the things that we know about his character. You know, we're going to subdue our own flesh. We're going to kill off our flesh. We're going to operate in spiritual things. We can't come into the, into the knowledge of the kingdom without first being born again, you know, and then once we're born again, you know, we're baptized, we're washed in the spirit. And now everything we do is from that spiritual standpoint, because the spirit gives birth to spiritual things. The flesh gives birth to fleshly things. We're going to kill the flesh. We're going to operate in the spirit. And we're going to flow in that spirit because that's how we gain access to the kingdom. If we are outside of the spirit, we're no longer we're no longer accessing the kingdom. You can't access the kingdom in the flesh. It just won't work because as we read in that scripture, you know, flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. And so that's where we are in this thing. What else? What else do I want to go back over? Yep, that's pretty much it. So let me see if there's any comments. Let's see if I can figure this thing out because before I didn't see comments when I was looking and that's probably user error. So if you are living in chronic sin, is there any way you can be in the kingdom? Ah, okay. So if you're living in chronic sin, is there any way you can be in the kingdom? Well, let me ask you this. Is there a ways, are, are there times when you are flowing in the spirit and other times when you're not flowing in the spirit? You know, I think that we can phase in and out of, of the spirit sometimes. So if you're in the spirit, if you're actually, if you were born again, first of all, you have access to the spirit realm. So if you've been born again, if you made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you, you checked off that first criteria. You must be born again. Okay, and then once you're born again, it's a matter of now we start to renew our mind. Like when, when we talk about growing in God, we have to renew our mind daily. You know, we're changing our mind from the, the former ways that we have. Okay, so we've been living in this body. Let's say I'm a 30-year-old and I'm just coming to um, make Jesus my Lord and Savior. I have 30 years of experience of how to live in this world. And it's not going to all be, you know, I'm not going to be able to step away from all that you know, right away. But, you know, the scripture says that we go from one level of glory to the next level of glory. So as we know better, as we know scriptures, as we know how to enter into his presence, um, how, as we know, okay, this is a work of the flesh. This is a work of the spirit. As we know those things, we'll be able to enter um, situations where we're, we're operating in the spirit. Now, if we come out of the spirit, it, and get back into the flesh, it's going to be hard. It's like, it's hard to phase in and out of stuff. Like if you're so used to doing things a certain way, like for me, when it comes to studying, there, there's a very specific way I have to, to study. I'm not good with having a lot of loud, you know, I, I'm not good with music. I'm not good with a lot of loud noise. You know, I can, I can enter into study with that, but it takes me a longer period of time. But when I get myself in the right atmosphere, in the right environment, if I'm doing the things that usually lead to spiritual things for me, then it's easier for me to, to get into the spirit and then I can access the kingdom. So that, that's how I would answer. I hope I answered that. Um, I, I hope you understood what I was trying to say um, when I answered that. So is, are there any other questions? Is there something that I said that doesn't, that didn't quite make sense? I know I was kind of, you know, just reading my notes in the beginning and then I started to flow a little bit after, but is there anything that, you know, I didn't tackle, I didn't touch when it, um, as it pertains to the kingdom. Okay, Stephanie, all right. Curious, because when you see so much success in people who are living in sin, yet say it's God's blessing in thinking God, this is a real question, although it sounds like I'm throwing people under the bus. I'm not truly, okay, truly don't know. Okay, so I get it. When you see other people prospering, I mean, there's a scripture that says, don't, you know, uh, don't, I'm just going to paraphrase, don't feel bad when you see evil people prospering, you know, because they'll have their day, basically. When God set up this world, he set up rules for, for living in this world. So we have, and we have principles, we have laws. So we have the law of sowing and reaping. So if someone sows a seed, they're going to reap a harvest, even if they're not good people. So sometimes the things that we do, you know, are operating in that, in that principle. So someone that's successful, if they are giving money to the poor, you know, they're operating in the kingdom principle by giving money to the poor. There is a reward that comes back for that, even if their heart's not right. 
You know, they'll they'll get their reward. They won't get the fullness of a reward because they're doing things from the wrong heart. But if you if you sow, you will reap. And so I think that's what happens a lot when we look at this culture and the ones that are prospering and they're saying that they're doing it in conjunction with God. And because God is a loving father and he is patient, you know, he doesn't necessarily um, bring the hammer down on people when they're not fully um, operating the, the way that they should. But um, yeah, just because they're prospering doesn't mean that they're fully flowing in the kingdom. But like I said, you can kind of flow in and out of the kingdom. It's just a little bit harder. You know, if you are doing things the wrong way, it's, it's hard to start to do it the right way because you're, you're practicing habits, right? Uh, when we talk about, uh, let's use an example, a basketball game, you know, a basketball player, you know, they can be all, have all the talent in the world, but if they practice the wrong way, if they don't practice the way that it's best for them to um, excel, what will happen is they'll be hit or miss. Sometimes they'll be able to get in the game and, and score a lot of points and get rebounds or whatever they need to do. And sometimes they won't, you know, it's the, the practice of doing things the right way is what leads to consistency and the consistency should over time lead to greater success. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Is there anything else? Okay. Let's see. So, I mean, when we think about prosperity, it's more than just our wealth. It's more than our finances. And, Quite frankly, that's an inferior, that's an inferior um, prosperity when you're just thinking about finance. And we have health, we have wealth, we have prosperity, we have um, happy marriages. You know, all these things come from operating at uh, operating out of the spirit. Just think about it. A lot of the stuff that we we're told to do or we're, we learn to do as Christians sounds like foolishness to to men. For example. To be the greatest in the kingdom of God, you have to be the servant of all. For a lot of people that are prospering financially in the world system, that's foolishness. That don't make no sense. And because it's foolishness, so they live their life in such a way where everybody is subservient to them, even their family, their spouse. And because of that, they wind up having bad relationship with their spouse, having bad relationship with their children, you know, and they don't have true prosperity. But because we know the scripture says that if we are the servant of all, that's that's the way to become the greatest in the kingdom of God. So an example in my life this morning, I made breakfast for my wife. You know, um, I got the kids involved. We made dinner because my wife wanted dinner. We found opportunity to serve her and in serving her. We have become the, you know, greater in the kingdom of God on, on this particular day. Right. But what happens is it becomes a competition. If I serve my wife, she's going to want to serve me back when it's my special day. Same with the kids. I serve my kids. They're going to want to serve back. It's, it's the kingdom will produce prosperity when you're sowing the things that the kingdom says to sow. So we're doing things in such a way that is countercultural. It doesn't make sense to people. And so they don't do it, you know, and what they might have is an inferior um, form of prosperity. Like they have all the money, they have the house, they have the cars, but they don't have no one to enjoy it with. You know, they got a bad marriage. They're on their fourth marriage, you know? So although it seems like they're prospering, they don't truly have real prosperity. And then all of a sudden they're sick, you know, because they don't have access to wisdom. You know, um, I'm, I'm a little bit overweight now. And so I was like, you know what? I need to lose some weight. And so I was like, okay, God, what am I going to do? It's like going to fast. Okay. What kind of fast? Just fast, fast meat. Don't eat meat. Now, I don't, I've, I've done it for, because it's not necessarily a spiritual fast. It's really specifically for losing weight. But God has given me that wisdom. I'm losing some weight. And who knows what's happening? That could be prosperity of my, of my body because maybe, you know, if I kept eating meat for, for the, over the last month, I was on my way to some cholesterol involved illness or something. And now I've reset my body. I don't know. Exactly. But we have access to the spiritual realm without even knowing. We don't have to tap into it with our brain. We're tapping to, into it with our spirit. And God is talking directly to us. And so we're flowing in a prosperity that sometimes we won't know until we get on the other side of heaven. OK, let's see what we have here. Uh, there's worldly assets and there's heavenly assets. That's correct. There's worldly riches and there are eternal riches. That's awesome. Uh, speaking truth, Phil. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, 
All right, let's see, Latara. Prosperity in the kingdom is a concept of being whole, not just our money. That's how the world thinks. But kingdom is whole in all. That's good. Okay. You know, God is always trying to get something to us. He's not trying to take something from us. When he gives us the rules and regulations or the laws of his kingdom, they're to help us to operate in the kingdom. And sometimes what's going to happen is, you know, it doesn't look like we're prospering. Like um, the example of a uh, kingdom-driven entrepreneur, a lot of the things that God has given, you know, um, Shea Bynes and the rest of the team to do seem like foolishness. And some of it took, you know, six years before it started to like make financial sense or whatever. But guess what? It doesn't mean that there was nothing happening. God was using the faithfulness of seed, right? And what will happen is there'll be a point where the acceleration is so great that you become an instant success. And they'd be like, well, where did this person come from? You know, and they will have no choice but to recognize it was, it was God, you know? And that's what God likes. He likes to be able to do stuff in such a way where we can't take the credit. He's not going to share his glory with anyone. Uh, I see Jasmine. Hello, Jasmine. Uh, okay. Yes, he is merciful. Okay, great. Just because you know God doesn't mean you are operating in it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. And let's see. Knowing is good, but operating is where it's at. That is true, Stephanie. So cool. Yeah. So thank you guys for bearing with me today. I hope I was able to answer the questions. Uh, my wife tells me I'm doing great. Well, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> and um, if there are any other questions or comments, I'll take a quick uh, look again. All right. So I think that's it. So I'm going to get out of here. And um, if there are any other questions that come up later, I'll pop back in here and, and try to answer them. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, thank you so much. Once again, I'm Phil Bynes, um, one of the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Igniters and um, part of team, team KD. And uh, you guys have a blessed rest of your Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And um, we'll speak soon.